So the video that you're watching looks like an entertainment special of something that I'm doing when I'm bored. But I want you to understand, everything that I do has a purpose. So what you're seeing is practice or fun play of two-hand overhead shots, left-handed hook shots, bounce through shots, which is a great drill that you know about, shooting it backwards. All of these things have a purpose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to walk you through the purpose of each one of them. The first one is that two-hand overhead pass. There are a lot of situations in basketball that players may or may not be ready for. One of the things is being able to throw an inbounds pass to the rim while there's a defender there trying to deflect. And obviously this could play anywhere while you're live in the game or on a side out of bounds play. So a great way to do that is stand somewhere and practice trying to make the shot, two hands, overhead, simulating how you would throw that lob pass. Now the other thing that attaches to is it's the same way that we're gonna throw a skip pass, obviously on less trajectory. One of the things you may have noticed as that ball flew is that you could almost read the label. There's no spin, which means we're getting even pressure from each, from each hand. This will give us the most powerful direct delivery of that ball when we go to make a skip pass. So give that a try and work that into your practice, even if it's just for a goofy horse shot. The next one that you saw was left-handed hook shots. Now, we may or may not have to throw up a left-handed hook shot. If we do, we, will start, we can start practicing that way. But the other reason that I work on that is for dexterity of the offhand. I'm right-handed. So I practice that with the left. If you're, right, you're left-handed, obviously practice with the other. But I think what you want to do, similar to the philosophy we have in all the other angles of, of approach, is that we challenge a skill to a greater uh, level of difficulty than we would when we'd play. Shooting a left-handed hook shot from out past the three-point line or half court or something like that is quite a challenge with your opposite hand. But what that's going to help you do is learn how to be able to control that ball in your hand, control that arm motion. Now, where would that apply? A lot of times, if you're a guard or perimeter player, and even now, bigs, when you get a rebound and you're busting out and there's somebody ahead, you have to make a pitch ahead. Let's say I'm dribbling the ball with my left hand and I have a defender right on my right side. I'm not going to be able to take the pass back to my right side and throw it with my right hand, and I may not be able to take it in both hands and push pass as it may be deflected for the proximity of the defender. So what I'm gonna practice doing is taking that dribble and throwing a baseball pass left-handed. As you practice that hook shot, you can mix in baseball passes and any other throw that you can work on with your left hand, and this will really, really help you with your dexterity in all ways that you may use your opposite hand while you're playing. What else it does is it helps you be able to control that ball as you're laying it in or any other pass that you may make, okay? The next one was that bounce through drill. Now we've seen the bounce through drill on some other videos that we've done, but it's a great tool to practice hand prep, posture, leading with the ball with your sequence and transferring your body's energy through your jump shot. So take that ball, bounce it on the floor, and as you bring it up off the floor, work on getting your hands set, leading with the ball past your jump, jumping through your release. This will help you with the quickness of your preparation for your shots. Also, you can learn with how much energy you need to transfer through your shot for what distance you're shooting from. It's a great way to practice, and the last part of what it'll help you do is the closer that you are, you can learn how much extension you need to use to be able to take away energy, and then the farther you go away, how much lower so you can transfer that energy. Understand, when you're closer to the basket, we will shoot higher handed to be able to give ourselves space in traffic and remove leverage, makes it an easier shot because we always want to release that shot, we always want to release full. And then as we move deeper, we're generally going to shoot the ball from a little bit lower. Now the last one was shooting it backwards. Shooting it backwards 
looks odd, but it does have a great purpose. I used to practice doing that just to see if I was shooting the ball straight. I say it all the time. Goal number one in to, sh to shoot the ball well is to shoot the ball straight. So to take the ball and practice shooting it backwards and follow through on that same line that you would shoot as you were shooting to the basket, you'll be able to let that ball go. And as you're seeing the ball fly or seeing where it's hitting on the rim, you can tell if you're moving the ball up in a straight line and releasing it along that straight line. Many times athletes manipulate and they'll move the ball from side to side. When we're open and we're shooting on our own, ideally we want to try and raise it in the line that we're going to shoot it from. Now, of course, during the play, we may have to move it, but this will give us an idea and a feel for how to let that ball go straight, release it on the line that we raise it up. Shooting it backwards gives you a good idea and a great visual to be able to check out if you're doing that. Go mix those into some of your practice. It's a great way to win a game of horse, but it's also a great way to build some of your tools. Let us know how you do, send us some comments, and keep us updated on your progress.